Hey everyone, I'm Alex Restrepo. I'm here with Anthony Cusimano, and we're talking about the Veritas Enterprise Data Services. Uh, and in particular, we're going to focus in today on availability. So Anthony, what are you going to show us today? So today I'm going to show you uh, the resiliency platform, which a lot of people aren't very familiar with. Um, but really, this is one of the easiest ways to automate and orchestrate an entire data center failover, either from on-prem to on-prem or on-prem to cloud. Sounds like it would be pretty complicated. Uh, you know, you'd think that, but actually it's really simple. To kind of give you an idea of how this whole thing is set up, I'm just going to take us into infrastructure real quick. Now from in here, you see a whole bunch of boxes. And the nice thing about these is, is it tells you exactly what you're looking at. So Resiliency Manager, Infrastructure Management Server, those are just two VMs that provide the application intelligence that the Resiliency Platform provides to allow you to do things like discover VMs, know where you're going in a cloud infrastructure, know what storage is available. It's kind of the all-knowing, all-seeing eyes and the application interface we're looking at. That's great. Do they also handle the movement of data between the two different data centers? That's a very good question. So we also have a third optional VM that is our resiliency gateway that we can put in both an on-prem to on-prem or on-prem to cloud that allows us to capture information at the input-output layer uh, to really get a very granular, targeted way to move data from point A to point B efficiently. Cool. It's very cool. And to really get down to how we replicate and what we replicate, we come over to our assets view. And the first asset we're going to look at is resiliency groups. And I'm just going to pop into our web group here that's already created. Um, and so kind of just, there's a lot on screen here, left to right, top to bottom, what we're looking at is a single VM that's in our New York data center. It is of type VMware. Uh, you'll notice that right here in the center, our active state is our New York data center. Our recovery state is our London data center. Right now, we're replicated to 100% and our time to sync is zero. There is zero lag in this environment. So if something were to occur, uh, an outage via network or you know, the data center goes down, we have options when it comes to recovery. So how do I do that? How do I execute on this actual plan that I put into VR, this resiliency platform? It's a very good question. So the way we do that is over here on the right. So our management operations, start, stop, pretty self-explanatory. Those just handle the movement of data, starting replication or stopping replication. So right now we're in a started state. Migrate and takeover are how we take action in an outage like we talked about earlier. Migrate is very, uh, it's very elegant. It allows us to shut down our primary data center, make sure that all data has replicated so we're at 100% sync state, and then we turn on at the secondary location, maintaining that 100% synchronization. Sounds like an ideal way to do this. It is very ideal. Now for non-ideal situations, <laughs> fires and such, you have the takeover option. So right. if we were in a non-active state in New York, we weren't at 100% sync data, takeover is the option we'd use. It's kind of nuclear. It allows us to instantly come up online at our London data center and start operating there. What are some of these other buttons like this rehearsal I see here? So rehearsal is really cool. It actually allows us to basically take everything you've seen here and test it in a sandbox environment. So we basically create a fenced off network at our secondary location. We take the active replicated data and are able to turn it on just as if it were a real failover or uh, migration. And we can test the entire order of operations and see it happen in real time with a completely safe, uh, non-volatile space. That sounds great, but it also sounds like I have to have an entire another environment available for that exact same amount of size. It would, it would seem that way, but actually we're using the same exact resources that we would have inside an actual failover. Um, so really we're just tapping into the resources at that secondary location that we would need to run the VM anyway. Sounds like an efficient way to do that. Very efficient. Now let's say we wanted to do more than just a single VM. That is where we go into our virtual business services. So the great thing about this is it allows us to tie things together and really tear out our order of operations. So I'm going to load up the plan view here, but you'll notice over here on the right, we still have the same exact management operations we had for our resiliency group. So now we can take things like VMs, Oracle, SQL, file systems, and we can tear out exactly what order they come online. So we had a web server earlier. If we had an Oracle database that that web server was dependent on, we could make sure that that comes on first, then our web server, and then you know our third and final server that provides the UI to our customer. So the entire stack from database to middleware to application front end, all can be orchestrated here. In the exact same way that we did the resiliency group as well. So even beyond that, now we've grouped these things together. What we have also the option to do is what's called an automation plan. Now this is really the coolest thing we can do inside the platform. So if we click on resiliency plans, uh, I'm just going to open up this one that's already built. It's called Stop and Start Resiliency Groups in New York. You'll notice we've tiered together a whole bunch of boxes here. I have to scroll. We've got so many boxes. 
If I click edit, what you can see is all of these white boxes up here at the top, those are all the operations we had access to in our resiliency groups and virtual business services. So we can take anything from any previous tier and tie it all together. Now the really cool thing about this is it also brings in the option of manual task and custom script. Custom script allows us to bring things in like Python, Chef, Puppet, and integrate those things into our disaster recovery, our migration, or any kind of automation orchestration takeover, really giving a customizable, fully integrated failover plan for any data center. So even if it's not pre-baked into the resiliency platform here, I'm able to start orchestrating different behaviors? Exactly. If we're missing a box here because you have a very unique environment, we're able to pull in your custom scripts and work those in to our resiliency plans. Sounds good. It's very good and it's very easy to do. It's literally drag and drop. So if you've ever used a utility like Visio, uh, you can just bring in those new boxes, click the pencil, point to exactly where you want these things to run, and it's all hooked together. Super easy peasy. Very intuitive. Absolutely. And uh, that's essentially the resiliency platform in a nutshell. Well, great. Thank you very much for your time, Anthony. Absolutely. Anytime, Alex.